Hey, you like my flags? You're smarter than I am. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order. If you could please stand and join me in a pledge to our flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, welcome, and to all of you who are here, thank you. Skip, why don't you join us at the table since you're way back there? No? So, would you like to join us at the table, please? It would make me feel better. <laughs> don't want me sitting behind you? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Brent. We can get started. That's all right. Great. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, well, you'll recall exactly a month ago today, we um, had our board retreat in Hanford, and one of the many items we discussed was uh, the fact that we, we do have $12 million in bond anticipation notes um, that, that uh, are coming due in, in September of this year. I gave you a brief history and uh, shown sort of some of the basic scenarios that, that we can employ um, to deal with that situation. Um, my plan here is to sort of just um, walk us through a few of those slides I showed a month ago and then bring in the heavy hitter, uh, Ms. Cheryl Vesley from Dale Scott and Associates, our consultant, um, to, to really kind of get down to the blades of grass and, and uh, elaborate on some of those scenarios that I presented a month ago. So for the time being, you know, just get us going with a history. Uh, the, the taxpayers of SIF, SFID number three passed Measure J in 2008, um, authorizing uh, $60 million for construction of phases one and three we issued contracts of approximately $40 million. Uh, about halfway through construction, after those contracts were let, um, lower assessed values and, and uh, maybe some over, overly optimistic projections um, led to us only being able to issue $30 million of, of the 60. And obviously, we didn't need to get out the entire 60 right off the bat, but we at least needed to get out the $40 million. At that time, in the spring of um, 2011, um, the board heard a presentation by Dale Scott um, as to how we could how we could at least fund the additional 10 million to finish the construction that we had already started. And you'll recall at that point, um, one of the options was to use uh, non-callable capital appreciation bonds, or, or you know, referred to as CABs. And uh, the estimate was, was that those could end up costing, because you're not paying down principal in the initial years, um, it's only towards the end of a, maybe a 30-year process that you're paying down the principal. Um, they got really expensive, 6 to 1, 7 to 1, 8 to 1 payback. And obviously our board was not comfortable with that. Um, so we chose to use a, a short-term solution, which is to issue band anticipation notes which is a short-term financing solution that can be used for a maximum of five years. We did issue those, and we issued them in two-year um, time periods. We issued, we issued uh, $12 million, and we actually needed 11 and a half to close, to close uh, off construction, and we were paying half a million dollars in, in interest. So $12 million of bands were issued in uh, September of 2011, coming due in September of 13. <clears throat> At this point, I showed a month ago that we have a combination of actions and strategies available to us. We can extend the bands, uh, or a portion of them, uh, through 2016 essentially three more years. I also talked about the cash available for possible buy-down, um, including $2 million 
in unspent construction equipment funds. Um, so of the 11 and a half millions that we thought we would need to finish the project, uh, we've been good stewards with that. We've got $2 million uh, we think that will come back to us as unspent that will go directly back to paying down those bans, um, as well as $2 million in reimbursements from the city of Tulare um, for street widening that we did, um, putting in larger water, water pipes, um, constructing two large wells on our site to help with the overall water system for the city of Tulare. We negotiated a $2 million in reimbursements from the city of Tulare, the first half of which we have already received, uh, and the, uh, the, the other half is going to come in, in two, two payments between now and this time next year. <coughs> so we have uh, $4 million that we could um, use to pay down the band down to $8 million. Uh, and then sometime between now and 2016, uh, the ADs uh, could, could possibly go up enabling us to issue GO bonds. Um, and we also have talked about a reauthorization strategy. We, we looked at that possibility for November of, of 12, um, didn't choose to do it. Cheryl will, will refresh our memories as to what the reauthorization strategy is. Um, her company um, is the one that, that developed this process. Um, 12 districts in the state did put a reauthorization, uh, reauthorization strategy on the ballot for November of 12, and all 12 passed. Uh, and the final thing is, is if we were to do COPs or certificates of participation on the entire $12 million, it would run roughly $800,000 for 25 years. So that's a significant hit to our general fund, uh, which makes it all the more important to, to avoid that um, at, at almost any cost. Um, and then finally, again, Cheryl will have a, a, a lot better example here, but the example I used at our board retreat was we paid down the 12 by, by the 4. Um, we, could, we could conceivably issue $8 million in, in general obligation bonds, uh, almost $2 million in current in, interest bonds, um, and then $6 million in convertible uh, capital appreciation bonds. Um, hopefully those calves will go for no more than 25 years and are callable, able to refinance after 10 years. Uh, the payback on, on the calf piece alone would be about 4 to 1, uh, which would bring the whole series um, to about 3 to 1. And at that point, we decided to schedule a workshop, this very workshop, to discuss this. So with that, unless you have any um, major questions from me, I think um, Cheryl will take over for the rest and then we'll spend the bulk of our time um, in a Q&A session as well as kind of generating some dialogue around this issue. The goal here is to flesh out sort of all the options um, uh, with the intent of coming back at our March board meeting um, uh, and, and getting a course of action approved um, so that we can get this process going because whether it's um, opting for the, the extension of the bands, or whether it's going out for geo bonds, or a combination of those, um, we need to start working on it this spring and summer so that we're ready when, when they expire, when, when the bands expire in September of 13. Questions of Britt before we move to the next portion of this? Okay. <laughs> um, great. So that was, um, so I'm just going to go over again just kind of the current status of where we are um, with the bands and the assessed valuation in the district and then move on to the two options um, that we brought to you to pay off these bands. Um, there you go. Okay, so here's the current status. Um, again, this is Measure J, so it was won by 72%. Uh, and you can see over on the left-hand side is the bond authorization. Um, so about half of the authorization has been issued, Series A and Series B. Um, and then there's about 11.5 million of that that was issued as a 2011 ban. 
and there's 18.5 <coughs> million that is currently authorized but unissued. And I just want to, um, and down here on the bottom right, I want to point out again um, what Brent had said is that they are due September 1st, 2013, um, for about 12 million dollars, which is a combination of. Sure. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little bit rude. Sure. I'm, I'm pretty deaf. Can you look at me? <coughs> sure, 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 sure. Thank you. Let me, let, me, uh, let me open this up so I can look at this. Um, so 11.5 uh, principal and um, about 500,000 in interest. Um, and at this point, I just want to remind you, so this is a, a, a tax rate limitation of $25 per 100,000 of assessed valuation. That's a prop um, 39 bond. So we're going to keep that in, um, in our minds as we go through this. Um, and, and like Brent had mentioned, the ban is a maximum five years, so it was originally issued in 2011, so it is possible to roll over these bans uh, and then have the final due date in 2016. That would be the five years. Cheryl, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is it all right to ask questions? Do you want no, us to please, yes. you finish? Or? No, no, go ahead. What is the possibility that, that the property values around here have increased enough? But, you know, because, I mean, farmland has gone absolutely through the roof around here. So has anybody looked at that? Well, so we have the, so on the next page, actually, is the, on the left is the assessed valuation chart. Um, so if you look, um, the, the brown, um, the brown bars are the original projection and the blues are the actual. Um, so you can see we have the most recent one, which is 1112. So it's still a little bit of a dip. It was down, I think, maybe 0.2% assessed valuation this year. We have not gotten the new assessed valuation growth. Those don't come out until June or July. Um, and so we won't know what those are for a little bit now. So I, Oh, I think we probably will not know the assessed valuations before a decision has to be made. So, um, so we'll have to move forward with this information without knowing what the assessed valuation is going to be. I think it is anticipated that there is a, a, a tick upgrade, um, but coupled with what you just mentioned, um, there are also some maybe some mitigating factors. According to the assessor's office, so if not, it is clear cut. Um, and we will not know that until um, late this summer after we have to move on this. Who, who made these assessed value projections? Um, those assessed by, uh, I believe we did, or Piper Jaffrey did, in 2008. No, I'm talking about the, the future. The, 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 With the, the red dots? The, yeah. The projected ones. So that. That um, Piper Jeffrey put that together, and that's actually the projected amount that will be needed in order to keep the tax rate under twenty-five dollars if you move ahead and issue Series C so right you're not, now. So you're not predicting that's what it'll be. I mean, we don't. It, it, you're, you're right. I mean, it, we we thought it was a, a reasonable projection, but it's certainly not. Um, did you discuss it with the assessors or anybody with anybody local? That we did not discuss opinion? it with anyone local. Do you have another copy for Skip? Sure. I do have some hard copies here. Does anyone else want? Thank you. Anybody else? Um. 4% now is kind of the reasonable um, assessed valuation growth that's being tossed around and people are talking about limiting it at 4%. Um, you know, looking back here, how you came up with the projections originally is you were going at 10 and 13%. Um, so now they're talking about limiting at 4% regardless of what has happened in the past. So 4% um, is kind of considered a reasonable assessed valuation growth now, but um, we certainly, it's hard, it's very difficult to project into the future what that might be. Um, so on the right hand side you can see the tax rate projections in red um, and that's just for series A and series B um, so it's just the existing debt that's out there um, and you can see up until about 2033 you're just uh, very close to that $25 cap um, and then starting in um, 2003 2034 you have a little bit more room um, underneath your tax cap to issue some geo bonds
Um, so before I get to the first option, I wanted to review the proposed state legislation. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because op the option I'm going to present next, um, the bonds were structured with this legislation in mind. Um, it's just proposed at this point, but we are more than likely it will be passed, and so it'll take effect um, at the beginning of 2014. Um, but right now, this is just proposed. Um, so there's going to be, and this is this is a, with the capital appreciation bonds, um, the scrutiny that they've come under recently for the high interest costs. <coughs> In some cases, not all cases, um, but some districts have Poway's probably the most um, well known at this point, but just a very high level of um, interest costs. Um, again, not all capital appreciation bonds are like that, but some districts uh, took the bonds out very long into the future and paid um, quite high interest rates. So there is. So this is the legislation that came to place to kind of limit that so that you can still use capital appreciation bonds, but they're not going to be such high interest costs. Um, so the first one is a ratio of total debt service to principal bond <coughs> cap exceed four to one. Um, the second one is they have to be callable, all caps are callable after 10 years. And a lot of times they're not callable at all now, so that's a, that's a pretty new one. Um, the next one is uh, they cannot exceed 25 years. A lot of them are going out 40 years, and that's what was causing a lot of problems. So now CAVs have to, with the proposed legislation, they are limited to 25 years. And then finally, not to exceed 8%. <coughs> some some capital appreciation bonds went up pretty high. 4 to 1 is more than 8%. It, de it depends on how far out you go. So, for, so it would be like if you issued a million dollar bond, then interest costs can be higher than 3 million. So that would give you one, the principal total debt service would be 4 million to one a principal. So you could act, eight percent is okay unless it's going out forty years, and then you'll get into trouble with the debt service. Okay. And then the other question would be: Will there be anybody to buy those at four to one? Were they because they were used to getting seven and eight to one? Oh sure, yeah. That's not that hasn't that hasn't been an issue at all. Caps. I mean, there's been a lot. We've done caps in this kind of limited area, and there's plenty. Um, that was some 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 school districts were taking or carrying them out a little too far. But there's certainly a market for these also. That's not that's not I think each one of our series, Hanford, by study and Tulare, all have have component. Right. And um, they just they just fell um, for the most part in, in these limitations and they and they were certain, well, we know they were bought. Um, we just didn't choose to take them out thirty five or forty years for a lot of the things and some districts did and and, and, uh, and that's what creates the seven and eight <laughs> okay, so the next page is option one, um, and that's basically um, you have paying down the bond by the $4 million that you have on hand, $2 million from the unspent 2011 bands, and then $2 million that um, is reimbursed from the city. And with this option, and then you would go ahead and issue Series C bonds right away. So you would take the proceeds from Series C bonds and you would pay off the remaining, I think it's about $8.5 million. So the bands would be completely taken off now. So you paid them off, so you have series, then you would have outstanding Series A, Series B, and Series C. And your bands would be paid off. Um, and with this structure, you have about two and a quarter in current interest, interest bonds, and you do have $6.1 million in capital appreciation bonds. Um, again, that's a capital appreciation bonds lets you push out the debt service a little bit into the future, and that's where it takes, if you remember a couple pages back, that's where you have room under that $25. So the cabs are pushing um, the debt service out a little bit into the future, but in, in keeping with the spirit of the proposed legislation, um, the repayment term, it would have to go out one more year than 25, so it would be 26 years that it would have to go out to stay under that $25 tax rate cap, uh, but the repayment ratio would be under 3 to 1. And of course, the interest rates would be um, below 8% and they would be callable within 10 years. So um, so we are keeping within the spirit of the legislation, even though it has not been passed yet. Um, we're basically keeping with the, the rules that, that they have um, established. Okay, so we'd be borrowing 8.3 million. Yes. And paying back 23.5. Uh, total interest costs, yes. So if you add <coughs> your, your, total, your total debt service payment over the 26 years would be $25 million. Twenty-four million. And that's paying back the principal. Right? Principal and interest. And interest. Yeah. Principal and interest. So total debt service. Okay. The ratio on that would be two point eight two to one. Who's going to pull the fee? No. 
No, it'll be paid, it'll be paid off in 26 years, right? 26 years you paid off. Yeah, no, so you paid off in 2038. John's asking if you could explain the red bars sure. and how they spike at the end. Sure. So this is again, so this would be the debt service just for the Series C bonds. So this is the, the bond you would issue to pay off the bands. Um, and again, we're trying to fit in with that $25 tax rate cap. So you're very close to the tax rate cap in the um, beginning years, the first 20 years. Um, and so that's why we're keeping the debt service very low. So the blue is the principal amount um, that we're paying off each of those years, and then the red is the interest. So at the end, you have huge payments. And that's the caps. Those are the capital appreciation bonds. So capital appreciation bonds, basically you, you issue the principal, and you keep on rolling over the interest. So, okay, so 20 years from now, somebody has to figure out how to come up with a ton of money. No, it's still no, it's still it's still, it's still um, staying within that twenty five dollar um, tax rate. So all, all that blue, the blue would would then equal, I guess, if I look at this correctly, the eight million dollars, correct? Yeah. Yes, all that's the blue right. on that chart is right. eight million dollars. That's so right. That's right. So if you go back to page three, you'll see. Yeah, because you're waiting because you're putting your you're holding off the interest. You got value interest. Yeah. John, yeah. yeah. go, 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 go back to page. Go back to page three real quick, and you'll see. We're going to be filling in this area, in the, in the red on the right. Oh, so this adds on to the other. Yeah, yes. it adds on to A and, okay. yes, a and B. Right. See, a, a and B alone right now. So if I took them together, then it, okay, good. Yeah, and we have a picture of that in a couple pages. Um, what the tax rate's going to look like all in. Um, so that's option one, so paying the G, uh, issuing a GEO bond right away and paying off the bands, um, but you would have to issue with some capital appreciation bonds. So the repayment ratio on that, um, is 2.82 to 1, which you'll recall at the board retreat, I showed a slide that showed all of our outstanding debt, Hanford, Vicelli, and Tulare, um, and this this would be as low as... Yeah, we were on 3.1. Yeah, right. as almost any of them. And right. this puts the total repayment ratio of 2.8 to 1 um, is, is really no worse and in most cases better than, than what we've done in our uh, six previous issuances. Mm -hmm. so. And you think you can sell the option one? Yes. There, there won't be a problem with that. Yeah. Well, so, for Jasper, already, they're the underwriters, so they're already saying it's fine. They're the ones that um, uh, structured this deal, so they're fine with it. Uh, Cheryl? Yeah. Uh, say five years, five years into this thing, under option one, and Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, we have property values have, have increased. Right. Do we have the option to take to take out some of the cabs with with issuance of a new set of bonds that are uh, within the twenty five? Uh, yeah. The, my understanding is that Piper's Jack is going to make them so that they're convertible within ten years, callable within ten years. So that, that that's kind of a rosy scenario if we were able to do that. Then, then this ratio may even be lower so, right, right. if that happens. <clears throat> Plus, we still have $18.4 million we can issue if the property values are right. Correct. Right. Yeah, if your properties go up, you'll be in good shape. So is this, is it, am I assuming too much, or is it, is it, the, this chart is showing that for 26 years, the landowners will pay the $25 per 100000 and that would take care of, so the $25 is assuming a 4% assessed valuation growth. <coughs> so if all of a sudden your property values dropped or they did not uh, match the 4% and you could see your tax rate going a little bit above $25. And are we able to do that though? What would happen in that case? Yeah. You are. So so what the rule is right now is when you go to issue the bonds, you are projecting that using reasonable assessed valuation growth, which in this case 4% is considered reasonable, um, that you're projecting that it's going to stay under the $25 cap, then you're okay. And what happens after that? Because you, you can't, yeah, you know, can't no one, you can't predict that. Working. So <laughs> you can't be held, can't, can't be held mean, accountable you, for those fluctuations. You can't. I mean, you politically, you might, you might hear some noise. You might hear some people <laughs> saying <laughs> things, but um, yeah, but I think they're they're thinking legally under our obligation under Prop 39, where we're within our ability to do that. The, the one thing I guess we have to make sure is that that 4% really is reasonable and not overly optimistic and not egregious on our part. Right. We, we, we did that the first time. But, but right. at that time it wasn't. 
property values are going up by right. at least 10%. And, uh, yeah. Okay. It's going to be 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you, you will have caught up with us then. <laughs> Okay, so option um, so option two, that was option one. Option two is um, that you do still use that four million dollars that you have to pay off part of the band and you roll them over um, until you're allowed to do that until 2016. So you roll them over and that would give you enough time to go out for a, G, a general obligation bond reauthorization election. Um, and just to just to go over that quickly. Um, I think you've all heard this before, but it's an election that you go back to voters and you ask them to reauthorize a part of the 2008 election. So in this case, it would be about 18, a little bit more than, I think, 8.9 million to pay interest and costs from the rollover of the bans. So you go back to voters and ask them to reauthorize this amount um, because this will save them lower interest costs. And we write that in the ballot language, so that's what they are voting on. And this gives you a new tax rate cap. So you're no longer um, you're no longer having to issue um, capital appreciation bonds to stay under that $25 cap. You have an, a whole new cap. So you don't have that constraint anymore. Um, and then, like I mentioned, we had 12 of these last November, and they all passed. So it does seem like it is well received by voters. Um, they understand the idea. They're reauthorizing the debt. This isn't new debt that the district's taking on, and it will lower their, 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 the interest cost of issuing the debt. Well, and it's four dollars and fifty-five cents. That sounds better than what was the last number we heard? Like another twelve dollars, right? I think that's because they probably were reauthorizing the entire amount. Is my yeah. is my guess? You know, because no, you not okay. that enough. Okay. <coughs> so this is just the reauthorization. I mean, you could still do it that way, but what we're showing this here is just to pay off our current this is debt. Just a, right. just it's just to pay off the band. I think what, what we showed last time, at least in the summer, was taking the entire remaining 30 to authorize but unissued. And if we were to take that out of Measure J and reauthorize it on Measure Q, whatever, um, that's what it would be. If, if, if we were reauthorized and we issued the entire amount, if we were reauthorized for that 30 but only issued enough to to cover the 12 that, that was in our bands right now, it would be uh, four, and a, four and a half bucks. Um, so, so benefits, some benefits of doing it this way is that, like I said, you don't have to issue any capital appreciation bonds. That repayment ratio um, down at the bottom of the page, 1.65 to 1. Um, your total interest cost is 5.8 million compared to 15 million dollars when you do it with tabs. Um, so the interest cost is quite a bit lower. Um, the, the, the downside, of course, is that you have a new um, little bump up in your tax rate. Now, with option two. With option one in order for it to work, the, the assessment has to rise at four to four percent a year. What about option two? There's no. So there's no. Matter no what happens, we're, we're, we're I mean, okay. you would have to drop a lot because we're projecting at four dollars, so and you have a cap of twenty-five, so you have a lot of room. So, but it, just for the sake of argument, then if we want option two and, and the, the, the assessed valuation went zero, yeah, we're still okay. You're fine. Um, okay, so that's option two. And then the next page, we've just done a comparison between one and two. So on the left side, you can see um, the repayment of that service schedule. Um, the red line is with the reauthorization, so it has a more constant level of debt service going across. Um, if you issue the bonds right away, the Series C right away using capital appreciation bonds, you can see that bump up in the future. Um, and that's that $10 million in interest cost we were talking about. So there's um, quite a bump up there. Um, on the next, on the graph right next to it, though, you can see the total tax rate. So the gray is with the reauthorization. So you can see for those, um, for the next um, 20 years, uh, you are adding on that four and a half uh, dollars per hundred thousand of the assessed valuation. So your ta your combined tax rate um, from Series A, Series B, plus a new tax rate um, would be a little bit higher, um, and then it would fall down um, in the future. So from the, on option one, from the year 2032 to the year 2038, it's all interest. 
one? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it's not all. There's some principles, but you're right. I mean, it's, it's the majority of it is construction. So, so of that $25 assessment that's coming in, it's all it's going, going to pay into that breakdown right there. That's right. Yeah. That's the, that's the breakdown that what John was talking about earlier, page right. five. Mm -hmm. right. It shows blue and red. Option one, no, no, no reauthorization of action operating solely within the authority of the yeah. and, and don't have to go back out to the voters. That's, That's what right. I meant, no reauthorization of election. You don't have to go back out. And hoping that the system really does go up that fast. One, you have optimism. Two, you're safe. You know, even if it doesn't, you're safe. Uh, and we do get over 25. I mean, that doesn't mean we need to get a whole brand new financing plan in place because this is what I'm hearing here today because we're, we're, we're making this decision based on based on the 4% assumption which seems to be reasonable. So if it doesn't go 4% and we climb a little bit over 25, that doesn't, that doesn't disqualify or mean, meaning that we have to revamp the whole structure, correct? Is, is that right, Herb? Yes. Yes. Okay, what's your best option? Three? Those are the only... Those are the only <laughs> two. Uh, option three, you write a set. It's three and four. So, it's okay. I got the wrong paper. <laughs> so, uh, page eight is just kind of comparing all the financing. I know we talked about most of it. Um, so option one and option two, you can see the first um, row is a total debt payment. So it's $23 million if you issue it the caps. If you do the reauthorization, it goes down to about fifteen. million million dollars. Um, the debt repayment ratio is either a um, little under three to one or a little under two to one for the, um, if you do the reauthorization. I guess I'd have a question is, when was it, two years ago we decided to go with the bands? Mm -hmm. Why didn't we have option one and option two available to us then? Well, the, we did have the reauthorization that came, the we, well, the, no, I'm sorry, you're wrong. With the, when you issued the bands, um, you were hoping that the assessed valuation was going to grow so that you would not have to issue any caps. So yeah. you did a ban with the idea that um, assessed valuation would grow and then you could issue a geo bond using current interest rates. Because to me, these two options look better than anything that we had yeah. offered to us two years ago. Yeah. If, if I could, as I recall this whole thing, when we first became aware that we had issued uh, about $30 million and we needed another 10 or 11 and we had no more room. I think that came to, that came as a shock to me because we had never heard of this issue before. And, and at one of our board meetings, an agenda item as to the solution to the problem without much discussion was just to issue uh, capital appreciation bonds of whatever, whatever it was we needed, 12 million or that it was going to cost like 78 million to pay back. Right. I think, uh, yeah, right. and so I don't know if that was, was the recommendation of, uh, of Piper Jaffray and Dale Scott, or if that just came from from our uh, administration at that time. Just as the because that was that was an agenda item for us to vote on, mm -hmm. and then I think we started asking questions, and that's when we kind of put the brakes on things, and and then the, the solution at that time was to. Uh, was to go back to the voters and and ask for uh, the ability to go above the twenty-five dollars. And I think part of the discussion at that time too was in exchange for that was to maybe be authorized the sixty million and only and only ask for another fifteen million or so. so uh, they authorized thirty and asked for fifteen. So right. that, so that, but those 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 two you're right up until the end. I don't think those two things were discussed at the same time. I think you're right. You guys were presented with an action item two years ago, spring of 11, that said um, we need $2 million you know, issuing cabs will cost $60, $70 million in interest, eight to one payback. You weren't comfortable with that. Right. You asked what, what are the options. And the short term option at that point was, was bans. Oh, sure. No, I agree. Yeah. And then, and then, Six months, uh, eight months after that, after the bans were just issued, then we started looking at long-term solutions. And by that time, I was interim superintendent. We started talking about the reauthorization strategy and, and 
Um, I guess my question is, if option one would have been one of those options two years ago, we probably would have gone with it. Well, let, let me ask a question. Well, though. Two I think years ago, we didn't know that we had two million uh, excess oh, funds. Come back. Right. Right. Uh, the, the option one right, didn't option one right now is putting $4 million we into know, the we didn't, know we, we didn't that. know that two years ago. Well, and also, are, if, are my understanding is correct, aren't we also taking some future projects off the table here? And how does that affect us, right? Yes. Because uh, now we're not asking for the extra $5 million for phase two, right? That's correct. So how do you well, how, play that out for me so I understand that correctly? Because well, that's a consequence of this decision, correct? I mean, is it, there, when, when there we, is. I mean, we're maybe. making that decision, we're going to affect, are we directly affecting that project, or do we have a we, chance to... We've already made happens? the decision, and it's been submitted to the state, so it's a risk. Okay. They're processing it now, and the risk is it doesn't get approved okay. versus getting approved. So that just bettered our chances of it competing with other districts in the state to get okay, approved. So we have it in there now without a match. It's in there now without a match. Okay. Well, uh, if we went with option one, and if we're wrong and, and uh, about uh, assessed values and they don't go up, talk about what that does to us. I mean, you issued the bonds, so that's fine. I mean, you, you're going to pay off the bands, that's finished. You're going to pay off the, you're going to have the bonds outstanding. So nothing from that standpoint um, hurts you. Um, the only thing that hurts you, if the assessed valuation falls, um, your tax rate could be quite a bit higher than well, that's what I said. the $25. If it doesn't go up, what does it do to us? You said nothing, but you said... Politically, say, I, I mean, the financings are fine. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't care need, about that. I yeah. care about what, what happens to the, to the public. Politically, I think... We would no, what, tell me what happens to the public. Politically, we would be up, we would be up for criticism. I don't care about politically. How many do what's the yeah, what's the dollar numbers? If if the assessed valuations fall, yes. and that forces our twenty five dollars to go up. Yes. How much more can it go up? Can it go up? It can go up as far as you need to repay the debt. To, to cover well, to well, cover the shortfall. Well, let's so. say it was zero. Well, say it did what it did before. Or 2% <laughs> or something. Um, I, I mean, we can certainly run those numbers for the next meeting. I don't have them on hand. My guess is if it goes up two instead of four, I mean, you're looking at, if it stays flat to 4%, you're probably looking at around $30 instead of 25 But I'm, I'm guessing here. See, I, I really want to. I'm going to guess. Yeah. And you've heard as much as, I, I've heard as much as I've heard as much you. I'm going to guess one, option one has some appeal to the board mm -hmm. if, we, if we think that assessment rates going to go up. Mm -hmm. But before we like that idea, I, I want to know how bad it can get. Okay. Yeah, so what happens if we had a 2008 50% uh, decline or 40% no, decline? Well, well, that. that's, that's Suppose instead of, instead of being 4%, well, if, what if it was a quarter, or what happens if it was 3? What happens if it was 2? What happens if it was 1? So what happens if it was 0? Yeah. 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 Well, well, what happens if it was negative? Like it was well, before. I'll go if you want to go that far right. with it. But, well, uh, but we were there before, it so goes, that's the worst case. If it goes <laughs> negative from where we already are, uh, a lot of things don't matter. But, but okay, if you want to <laughs> I still right, want to know. All right, negative 2 then. <laughs> negative, so you want to do negative 2 to 4 percent. Yeah. So and and you're expecting us to vote on this in the March meeting? Well, we we can take as much time. I mean, we don't we we don't have a lot of time because we've got to get the wheels turning. But if we can bring you this information, well, I think if she can get us the information before the board meeting, of so course, we're it, it, it would come out. It would come out in the packet in advance of the meeting. But we'd like to have the agenda item on the meeting. So. You know, talking about these assessed values, you know what what really caused the assessed values to drop was the flood of overbuilding and. The likelihood of that happening any time in the next 10 years is probably slim next to none. Yeah, especially when the banks won't loan them any money to build. Well, there's other things that could happen. You know, you could have a, a, a worldwide uh, uh, reduction in commodity prices, and uh, that, would, you know, that, would, that, would, that would affect the money a little bit, too. Uh, and uh, uh, don't interpret what I'm saying is just trying to steer this in any particular direction, but I, I want to know how much risk we're taking. Mm -hmm. I guess I would have to ask Ken and uh, Lori, uh, option two is probably the safest option. Oh, is, yeah. is, is that is a, a, an issue with you guys if we go back out and ask them for a, an increase of four and a half dollars? you want to stay away from that? I think that's why I'm asking that question of what's the risk. I, I, I look at worst case scenarios back here, we were there before, I, I hope we don't go there again. But 
that number means a lot to me on how much risk we're taking and how optimistic we're being. And I don't mean to be pessimistic whatsoever. I want to be optimistic, but what if we don't do, you know, what if they just stay where they're at? I'd like to know what we're asking the taxpayer because then we could say we thought about that and yeah, we did, we, we, we went on being optimistic about the market, but if we're even if we're even cautious, then maybe the other option is the way to go. So if we see that, if we see the kind of breakdown, Cheryl, that they've asked for, which mm -hmm. kind of lines out for us from negative two up to four, mm -hmm. and I know that in my in our option two, our risk is going to be about that four dollars, four dollars and fifty cents, even five dollars, mm -hmm. and I can take that number against this sliding scale you're going to develop mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. for our risk, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be able to decide is the is the <coughs> kind of expediency of option one worth that little bit of risk here because maybe the decline isn't going to be any more than what the four or five dollars would have been going up. We'll do the, the same side. thing we'll do the same thing for option two right. and show because again option two for the four and a half bucks it, it assumes the four and a half as well. Right. So yeah. we we'll do the same thing for option two and show those. And I'm sorry, I should have anticipated but that. option two you gotta what happens if the voters turn it down? That's, that's the other element. I mean, that's, that's the other element. No choice, the one, but at, least, at least the voters decided, not us. Go back to option one. <laughs> well, then what's your as long choice? As we don't can you go back to option one then if they turn it down? Yeah. Um, you can go back to option one. I mean, that's the final column here. We did look at that. Um, so you go back to issuing capital appreciation loans. Okay. Um, well, and remember, real quick, if we do option two, we've got to go back out to the voters. And we're going to have to have some. Uh, we're going to have to extend our interim financing. Yeah, we'll get to an election. We're going to have to roll it. Yeah. And so and there, there's just to, more moving parts in option two. And we have till two sixteen. Well, right now. Right. Another thing I want. Five years on those, right? Yeah, we can go. We, we've got up until thirteen to roll them again. Right. Yeah. I also think it'd be worthwhile for somebody in your staff, between now and when we have to talk about it again, is to actually consult with. Uh, the Tulare County Assessor's Office, and uh, not, but not that their opinion is any better than yours, but if it's different, I'd like to know that. Piper Jaffe actually did speak with them. She just said they did. I, I'm sorry, I didn't realize Piper Jaffe did it. Mark, Mark Jaffe and uh, Mark Farrell and I uh, were in contact before we got Dale Scott, and, and Mark talked with uh, the County Assessor's Office, and they think it'll be a positive number. Um, they think it could be as high as 2% mitigated by uh, some potential farms and, um, and and dairies asking for an adjustment. And so they think it'll be somewhere between um, one and a half to, to two and a half percent for the, for the first year. Now, I mean, we're, taking, we're taking this thing out several years, so we're talking about an average. Um, but that was just... Yeah, they, they think it's going positive, but they don't have real good numbers either. I'd like to see a written report. Either from you or them, I don't care who. Mm -hmm. Assessor's office could do an advisory writing or write-up. And, and if, they, if the assessor's office doesn't have the desire to predict past next year, well, okay, whatever we can get. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, we say, well, this can't happen again. We didn't envision it happened the first time. And, uh, uh, so do I, do I think it'll be as bad as before? No, but what, there's no reason to think it can't go negative again. You know, particularly if all of our dairy fields broke and, and somebody, well, we'll decides, to somebody decides to quit buying walnuts. I mean, there's all kinds of things mm -hmm. that could affect the assessed value. I don't think it'll go down again, but it might not go up. So we'll get an opinion on that. Um, Cheryl will run um, the numbers for option one and two um, and, and just show the various levels what it, what it would be in terms of what it would be in terms of cost and we'll include that in the board package is that right I'm sorry Ray. I'm sorry <laughs> that's okay I'll get an, I'll get an opinion on what yes. John was asked for and we'll run those we'll run the numbers on option one and two right. and then we'll include that in the board package not before is that right well, at, at a minimum, in the board packet before the meeting, so that they have the so that they have the weekend. Before, can we get it? Well, 
if we're going to agendize it, it's better if we give it to you when we give you the agenda materials. We can get the agenda out on Thursday. You'll have Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then Ken and I can talk about it. We're on the budget committee, so he and I can right. talk about it together. Uh, right. once we get you can get it yeah. We can. Yeah, we no. can get it out ahead of time to our budget committee members. Now, in the end, I understand this board is going to have to pick their own number for what they think the assessed probably is going to do. But we need more tools. Mm -hmm. I mean, just want to reiterate that a drop in assessed valuation is going to affect both options. Well, let's right. see. Right. Okay. Just to keep that in mind. So. What do you mean? No, that, that the second option it is affected. Well, it doesn't affect it because you're not hitting the cap, so you would never have to issue capital appreciation bonds. But if you go to the voters assuming a four percent assessed valuation growth, and you tell voters. We are predicting that the tax rate is going to be four and a half, four, four, four and a half dollars, and the assessed valuation drops. You're going to be kind of in the same position where they're going to see a tax bill higher than right. what you were saying. Yeah. Well, you go higher, position, or not longer. Not longer. Right. Yeah. Not longer. Yeah. No, the debt service is again, set. If it goes down to two percent. We'll show you. If it goes down to two percent. It is going to be more than it might be eight months. Yeah. So, be, so right. yeah. And I'm sorry. I should have had those figures. I should have just had these questions and, and had that. And so I apologize. But we'll do them in, in the work packet. Yeah, but if Ken and I can get them, then we can talk about it. Uh, we can get it to you as soon as they get it to us. Mm -hmm. okay. It should just take us a couple of days. Great. Uh, Brent, I had a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have talked about uh, in our Series A and Series B issuance as to, you know, there's like uh, 19 million or 10 million. And I know there's some requirements for, uh, for the lack of a better term, seeking, seeking funds or. Or, uh, building a reserve. reserve for the, the county and, levies. The county levies to build the reserve, um, just just because they've got to make they've got to make these bond payments every year. They want to make sure they're 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 covered. Um, when it was funded, Piper Jaffrey funded a reserve. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the county burned that reserve the very first year, and rather than rather than bill taxpayers uh, nineteen or twenty dollars per hundred thousand dollars assessed. They only they they only charge them for about half that, and they spent their reserve instead, and so yeah, mm -hmm. and so uh, over the last couple of years they they've been building back the reserve, um, and, and, and according to this this is what precipitated the call from Mark to the county to talk about that. Um, they've indicated that they are um, almost almost paid back in terms of having the reserve in place. And so then it's just a matter of replenishing maybe the portion of the reserve they use on an annual basis for the maybe the delinquent accounts or something like that. Um, so that's what enabled him to to put this um, to put these scenarios together. Because right now we're bumping up against the 25, but about 20 20 percent of that is because they're they're building a reserve, which should end this this tax year until so we'll be back to. Um, just over 20 bucks per hundred thousand dollars set, which is currently being used. So he had that conversation. They are over levying for the reserve right now, but that should cease, which is what created some room in here for issuing um, uh, some geo bonds. In, in terms of dollars, what, what is that? Mr. What, what, uh, Do you know what they're required to keep? I don't know what they're required to keep. What they usually do is they um, do an 18-month rolling period, so they actually collect 18 months of debt service even though you're paying one year. So I think what happened is um, as the assessed valuation fell, started falling, they were collecting too little, is my guess, and so they started, so they're, 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 the reserve kind of started shrinking. But it's generally six months of the debt service, I guess, is the reserve. Keep on Let me get clear then, if either option, if property values shot up like crazy and, and we still had an 18.5 that we could issue at that time mm -hmm. with either option. Yes, yeah. unless the only thing, Ken brought it up earlier, one of the things that we discussed right. last summer yeah. was when we go for a reauthorization, if, if we wanted to tell, if we wanted to tell the voters, we've got 30 million of, of authorized but unissued because of this AD issue. <coughs> we may we could we could deauthorize deauthorize <laughs> thirty and only reauthorize twenty, right. and so then we wouldn't have we would only have eight million. And yeah, that would only be another option too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Uh, Brent, uh, one thing I'd like to see with, with, when you take all this stuff you talked about with the two options, and depending on what happens to the assessed rate, show us the impact on this on the general fund. Shouldn't have any impact on the general fund, too. If, it, if, uh, if you, uh, well, tell me, if, if, if uh, we don't have the money, if, if, if you can't, if you can't, uh, okay, that's a question. I assume that if you run out of money, you make it up out of the general fund. Yeah. No, we wouldn't, Steve. This $25 per $100,000 So the voters just take it in a year for the whole thing. There's no risk to the general fund. The rest of the general fund is if we, if we didn't do any of these things and we had to do with uh, some other yeah, 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 yeah. right. 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 I'm not a date, I'm glad of it. But by doing this, we're not and by, by doing this, we're not gonna spend any more of the bond money than we already have. Am I correct in saying that? We're not gonna get to the sixty million ever. That's off the table. How does that work? Why am I confused? No, 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 no. Option yeah. one still there. Okay. Or even an option two, if you decide not to reduce it as an enticement to the voter. Yeah. Okay. It's our call. You could reduce it from 60 to 55 or 50 or 30, like whatever, you, whatever you put out. We've actually got $4 million more million we could issue mm -hmm. because we're paying it down with cash. Am I right? We've actually got four more, so we could actually, if, if property values increase, we could actually go up to what is that, 22 million? Because we're dropping it with, we're dropping our down by four million dollars because we're paying it down. Does that make sense? You can split that. Yes. That, that four million, that four million came out of Measure I. We're basically just putting it back. Right. Two million of it we just didn't use. I mean, we've been sitting and we thought we needed it and we didn't, so we're going we're gonna to shove it back into the band. So we're just paying down. The other two million was, was spent to, to, to right. put in city in infrastructure that they're going to yeah. reimburse us for. And so that money will be available if the property values increase. What's, so. what's option two on that as reimbursing you? <laughs> <laughs> See, at one time, uh, to explain myself, the board at one kidding. time I was worried that if we made the wrong choices, the general fund got whacked. Well, if that's, that's not true, that's true on the bands. Yeah. On the on the, 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 the short-term financing we have right now, it turns, it yeah. it turns okay. into okay. long-term yeah. financing. Yeah. Yeah. We get but, but these two options, that these two options, out. take those out. Right. Right. Both of them. Okay. Take that so out. then, when the general fund is not at risk, considering where I live, I'm more deferential to the Tulare folks. Uh, was before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a, a comment. Uh, part of the sales pitch before, and 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 uh, the anticipation of, of going back to the voters and asking for uh, authorization to go above the twenty-five dollars, which may not be giving us more money over the long haul, but in, that, in, in exchange for that. The sales pitch was going to be, well, we'll, we'll reduce the $60 million down to some number. You know, so so if, for sure, if we're not doing that, I'm not going to go out there and try to sell this. You know, just because we ran out of, because we ran out of money. With, with that in there, I may consider it, but uh, I, my feelings are pretty much the same as they were at the time that we voted to... Uh, Kind of kick the can down to to this uh, discussion that uh, today, I, and I know that they're weak, they will probably pass. I mean, your history is tell is telling me that uh, you had 12 and they all passed. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, I, I talk to people, and, and especially with what's happened recently, you know, no matter how you present it, there's going to be those that are thinking you're wanting more money from them when. Mm -hmm. That's, I understand that may, that may not be true, and actually option one, it's got to build over in. the long term, is going to cost them more money, but I don't think they care. Well, yeah, here, they, here's the way I see it, uh, is by what we did two years ago, saved the voters in Tulare County about $50 million by not going with that issue that we we had on the table right. at that time. But those wouldn't be, those would be under 
under the new legislation, we would be out of compliance, correct? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Back and what are you going to do then? Yeah. But wouldn't that be a, a, a true assessment? Because we, if we had studied that and understood it and voted on it, mm -hmm. we were going to cost the taxpayers seventy-six million dollars in interest, and now we're going to cost the taxpayers under mm -hmm. one fifteen million, under under two five million. Mm -hmm. so, I, mean, we I, mean, totally I still, I still, I, I, I still want to see those numbers because if I admit, it, it might not be, the numbers might be uh, what was more you said, more five or fifteen. Well, it might be fifty, depending on what what it, what the, those numbers show us, What's and we end? just need to know. You know the, 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 the interest is going to be the same regardless. The if the assessed rates don't assess value doesn't go up. You no, know, what it does is it kicks up the payments that the property tax, property tax payers pay. Right. Our interest are going to be set at fifteen right. million. Once you sell the bonds, the interest cost is set. It's set. not going right. to be. I don't understand. If, if, the, if the taxpayers pay a lot more money, it goes somewhere. Well, yeah, it's making up the shortfall if the assessed yeah. valuations drop. Oh, that, that's where oh, the interest oh, is going to come from. So they just, their tax rate goes up. Right. The amount of dollars it pays doesn't. Right. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. So in these scenarios, I don't mean to ask tough questions. No, no, no. I apologize. Um, we're not. We're not doing anything with this red portion. Is that correct? correct? But we still have. It. We still have. It. We still have it. What under what circumstance or when does this come into play? Down the road, um, when when AVs do grow enough, AVs mean assessed valuation. You could issue these if you could yeah. stay at the twenty-five dollars. Exactly. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. Right. And, and under the question I asked, Lori, let's say assessed values went went up, you know, maybe more than we anticipated, and we, had, and we then had some room in there to issue more for these bonds. We could actually issue some, not to use the cash necessarily if we didn't have that, but to pay off uh, some of these uh, cabs that we're going to uh, Because they'll be called. Yeah, I think, I think that's right. I don't want to double check on that. That's before, what but I, I'm, I, I'm, okay, I, that was my next question. Well, that one's kind of important to me. Or you could finish, finish the cab. Or you could finish the cab, of course. Right, right. Yeah. Probably what we did. So you can we just don't want 40 years for someone to go. Did those board members know what they were doing? <laughs> the way I see it, as long as those, and this kid with all due respect to you, uh, as long as those uh, hospital bonds are on, then we're in good shape. He's going to look at that and think, man, that, that COS is a bargain. Is that right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty high, right? Well, three or four times because there is a possibility, Eric, that the state doesn't approve. They want to. They want to see some matching funds, and in order to do, be able to do the rest of it. But right now, you're you're proposing it with no matching funds. The phase two, it's either going to be accepted or rejected. There's no in between. Okay. And well, so, if they know. reject it, then we could resubmit it, and we would again perhaps resubmit it with no match or a match. That would be the board's decision, but then it would get accepted or rejected. Right. Realistically, there's plenty of facilities for a while. Now I'm going to go to my plan three again. You have 480 acres. When the college is built out, how many acres will it take? How many acres will it, will it sit on once it's completed, the college portion of it? 120 acres. So you got 300 and... We have 493.3 total acres. The, the site by the state is 120 for the campus. Mm -hmm. And then we're farming 320 in addition to that. So your point because, is we could sell off some of that? Yeah, that's plan three somewhere down the road because you know the interest in this area is going to mm -hmm. increase. And you're sitting on an asset there that will more than likely it, grow. It's, it's an asset. And that could Farmers be. never sell ground skip. You know that? I'm not taking that opinion, well, but you know, like, we are up against that big wall. I'm just saying, <laughs> no, I understand the politics of it all, but when the board bought it in the first place, the plan was to sell about 200 of it. 110. Yeah, I and think we, that's still in the, in the master plan, isn't it? And we, and we didn't right. look seriously at that in the last few years, because it's everything's that dropped. Yeah. That's right. So in time, that's going to become an increasingly more valuable asset. 
another possible solution in the future. I, I appreciate option one and two. The health get a lot better. Than two, two good options. We know what we need to do in terms of running some additional analysis. Mm -hmm. We'll get a written advisory from our Tulare County Assessor's Office. Or or me and a bond consultant. Uh -huh. yeah. kind of and we'll get um, and we'll get information out to our two board members who sit on the finance committee, budget committee, as soon as the information is available to us. And we'll have all the documentation in the board packet when it's published for all board members before the March meeting. And this is open session decision. We cannot talk about this in closed session before, right? Correct. It's all open. Yeah. There's nothing here. I mean, this meeting was open too. Yeah, yeah. Nobody showed up. Skip. Yeah. Oh, well, I was Skip. Skip. <laughs> Skip, on behalf of the board and administration, thank you for being here. I was hoping the whole bond oversight committee would have stayed. I, was so I think you guys just got done too early. Is that what happened? They didn't want to wait? We got done here. We got done here. We Was it? Yeah. One, thing I learned, one thing I learned in my short But they didn't get any of this, did they? Did they get no. this presentation? No. Sorry. No. No. Okay. Yeah, one thing I learned in my short tenure in politics, people normally don't show up until it's too damn late. <laughs> they're not here to give you any any assistance, but when it's too late, they, they want to complain. And, well, and their attention span is usually not fighting about an hour, as much as our children, pretty much. <laughs> You're being taped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not taped. Okay. No, it's okay. Yeah, the camera's directly on you. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any other questions? Comments? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.